Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a great day so far. I have to tell you, I went to Dollar Tree within the last week, and guys, I finally, the heavens opened up, and I found all the good stuff, makeup-wise. Normally, I feel like I, I see some good stuff. I go trying to look for the good stuff. It's not at my store. Well, it was. It was, and even some stuff that I haven't even heard people talking about. So, yeah. Everything at Dollar Tree is $1.25. And there are some things where I'm like, how? How are we doing this? How are we offering this? There is some of the stuff that I've been experimenting with, but I've just got to give you the full scoop. I've got a little bag full of things. The first thing that I put on my face today actually were some little cooling pads, like little gel pads um, that you can keep in your freezer or fridge and then put on your face. I kept them in my makeup fridge up here and then just held them on my under eye and on my top part of my eye, anywhere on the face, the temples, anywhere where it feels like you need that soothing, cooling benefit and those were so nice. I could see me like putting a headband on and just like sticking them up under here and just wearing them around. Very enjoyable and again it's a dollar twenty-five. Why do I feel like I can't get the camera level today? I don't know what the nail is. But as I sit here now, I've got foundation on, foundation and concealer. And then I do have the next step in the process, this Be Pure line. I tried a really good blush from this line before, and then there was a decent base product as well. But this is the Infused Pressed Face Powder. They say it's green tea infused, provides smooth matte finish. It's a smallish powder, you know, you're getting 0.17 ounces. But this could be like a neat little touch-up thing for some people, and I'm gonna actually try to straight up set my under eye with this and see how it goes, okay? I'm just gonna pick up some with my sponge and dab it in here and ooh. It's going over shape tape today. I'm wearing actual shape tape, which I just hadn't reached for in a while and I thought, let's give her a spin. Have you guys seen this shape tape radiant? I'm getting ads for that. Now, what does that do to the cr extra creamy version of shape tape? How are they different? How are they similar? I guess that's the question I should be seeking to answer myself. But anyway, I feel like as I'm building just a little bit, I am seeing like the whiteness <laughs> coming through. Not a bad option for setting the under eye or for like mattifying. I touched up with this the other day on top of makeup and it's not the most invisible looking powder, okay? Like I feel like Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless or the Kosas Cloud Set really can like go over things and perfect but not really look makeup-y. This will look a little bit heavier. So not awful, but not maybe the most ideal powder. Now my skin feels pretty juicy all over today. So I'm just going to grab another powder for all over. I'm going to use the Relove by Revolution Super Matte in beige. And I'm just going to get this on all over everywhere where that little green tea powder wasn't applied. Now, something to note about Dollar Tree, when you're looking for the beauty stuff, it's not all going to be in the beauty section. Like some of this stuff that pertains to false lashes that I got, and also new LA Color stuff, I found it in a display that in my store was just in a completely different zone. And maybe this is why I've missed out in the past. This little thing at the end of an aisle was like, past the checkout. Okay, so you gotta circle around and go around the outside and check it out first and then go back and check out. But you guys are gonna be very impressed when it comes to some of this eye stuff. But yeah, just getting that powder on. So I feel like when I put some bronzer on, it's not gonna be too clingy to certain areas. Hi kitten. Rosie's back. She's like, this is the place to be in the mornings. This is the bronzer I got from Dollar Tree last time. It's the Bronzed Beauty Matte Bronzer, which is really totally good. A nice wide pan of product, albeit a shallow pan, but still. It'll do, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. This is not the focus of the video, but I just thought, heck, it came from Dollar Tree. I'll go ahead and pop it on. My base makeup today is actually Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. Yet another thing I hadn't worn in a while and I thought let's make sure that stuff's still good. And I like it. It's very hydrating and it looks nice on the skin. We're getting all bronzed up, a little bit contoured. Kitten's trying to go places she doesn't need to be. Kitten, let's not. She's thinking about the top shelf of my uh, bookcase far over there. Oh, oh she did it. She's not gonna be able to get down. Why is that always my first thought? It's like they were able to get up, 
why do I think they're gonna be unable to get down? I kept some of the boxes that certain things came in just because I thought like it's a little stepped up. Dollar Tree stuff can be very bare bones looking. This Be Pure line, I hope to see more and more from them because everything has been pretty good so far. I had to completely go over my nose again because I had to wipe my nose. I don't feel like I have a cold, but I just wake up and it's runny sometimes. I guess it's springtime, it's allergy time. What do we have for cheeks? So this was in the new LA Colors section. I found these cream gel blushes and guys, they're pigmented, they're potent. Here's the thing. I feel like the way the tubes are, they feel very light I'm feeling kind of a hollowness in the back end. It's as though there's a big air bubble in here. Also, you can sometimes sense that when you take the cap off and it just immediately starts oozing out like there's pressure behind the product. I don't know. It's really hard to say what exactly is in there, but it was $1.25 and a little bit does go a long way. So I'm gonna show both shades. This is admirable first. You can see that there's just like a little bit of residue from the last time I used this on the top and a little bit does a lot. And it doesn't set in too, too fast because I was like struggling with this last time. I was like, it's oozing out. And then I had stuff on my cheeks and I didn't want it to set, but I had no choice and I still was able to work with it. So I grab out my little Sephora 56 and you can see it's nicely pigmented. I would not call this a sheer cream blush. I put on a very tiny amount and I feel I've got plenty on the cheeks, really, for most people's liking. <laughs> I put it on lightly with the knowledge that I am adding a whole other blush on top. Consistency-wise, they call it a cream blush. I think of it as more of a liquid. I'm gonna do Adorned next. So this one is a little deeper, and we'll get a little bit of that on here. I was just so impressed by these. Maybe I've missed it, but I haven't heard anybody talking about these, and I was just so surprised to see them. Um, I wanna say there were two other shades. I just didn't want to really get absolutely everything in case they weren't good at all, but see, look at this colorful, colorful blush. I can't stress enough, I'm putting on tiny dots, tiny little dabs, trying not to even squeeze the tube, just use whatever little bit of residue was left on top and blending that in. And it's so great, and it's not like sticky. It's not changing the surface of my skin, which as you saw, I powdered it, you know? It just really looks good. I would definitely suggest looking for those, but tell me if you've tried them, do you feel like your tube is like half full of air? I just feel like there's a lot of air in there. That's my one complaint. And let's just do a little bit of highlighter, by the way. Um, this is not from Dollar Tree. This is Wet n Wild in Precious Petals. We'll just pop a little bit of that right in this zone. Give us a little more glow. I feel like I came away from the, the cream blush looking slightly more glowy on the cheeks, but still overall, after all the powder, we're kind of mad. I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows and then we'll do this eye look. All right, friends, I got my brows done and new in the LA Colors section, these little duos. They don't look super fancy, but I think these are gonna be really good. I've swatched them and there's one that I, is a little more faint than the others. It's the one called Pink. So it's these little split pan eyeshadows. One side is matte and you know, this is gonna be a little bit softer, just the nature of the shade. And then it's got this kind of like mauve -y murky color. See how light those are? It's even hard to really detect the matte shade in that duo, but I feel like I'm probably going to work that into the look. Then I got brown right here, and they had, I want to say, like maybe six different options on this stuff. Super soft, incredibly like right up there with anything else, and then a very metallic, perfectly nice quality shimmer there as well to go with it. So I'm really glad I got that one. These are gonna make me think twice about my little Clinique duos. And then I got the one called Purple, and it looks like this. We've got a matte side and a shimmer side, just like the others. So there's that purple, that really pretty like lilac that I think is totally gonna show. And then the shimmer is kind of like this berry color. See that right there? I love that each one is a matte and shimmer mix. These truly excite me, okay? So I'm gonna start with the pink one and I'm gonna see if this matte shade in here could be okay just in the crease. And I've already put on Milani eyeshadow primer. I am seeing this shade, actually. Oh, sure. That's a fine way to just get it all set up. 
I mean, it's a dollar twenty-five. I love seeing people's like little Dollar Tree hauls and stuff, and it's like they need to remind you it's only a dollar twenty-five. But when you're used to either standard price drugstore makeup or high-end makeup, like you kind of forget how little did I pay for this? Okay, so this is beautiful for a crease color, actually. That one, and then I might go into the. Sh it's interesting how the shimmer in this is actually the deeper shade, but I might just like add a little bit of that to the crease on the lid, I think it would be pretty too. It's just gonna be a softer look out of this one, which is fine. But just know, like if you're really going for the major pigment, pink is the softer of the three I got. I'm just blending a little bit around the edge. Things seem to be blending just like any other eyeshadow, honestly. I feel like we need to dive into this purple one today. This brown is very solid. The pigment on that matte is lovely and the shimmer does not feel funky at all. Like it feels like a true good smooth shimmer. So maybe I'll bring that into another look on another day, but I think you can kind of imagine what we could turn out with that. Um, this might be a little bit more like, hmm, where's that gonna go? I'm taking my flat brush into this kind of berry shimmer, and we're just gonna see how well that translates on the eye. It's not an incredibly dark shade. For what it is, it's showing up fine, but it's kind of like a mid-tone. I would say. Probably the duo that actually has the best light and dark balance that I picked up is the brown. But this is pretty. Not incredibly dark, but it is true to color. It's true to the way it was swatched. Now let's go into this shade right beside it. Ooh, that's fun. Guys, that is some opaque lavender shadow at the DT. I love that. That's the star. I mean, that's really impressive. It's going on top of that Milani eyeshadow primer. It's clinging nicely. It's showing up. We use the pink one in the crease just for something a little softer, but yeah, a little delicate springtime eye, of course. If you need some cheap eyeshadow, check these out. Then I'm gonna pop on some mascara and we have some lash stuff to talk about big time. Okay guys, I just put on some mascara and now we're gonna talk about this lash situation. So the Ioni brand, I found it. I'm impressed. I'm like, what is going on here? Look at the packaging. Look at this detailed, cute, flowery packaging. Now, I remember first being exposed to Ioni. Not that it was any of the same kinds of products, but I remember being at a Fred's Super Dollar and finding various Ioni makeup products. But here at Dollar Tree, what they're putting out is lash stuff. So I found this two-in-one everlasting lash glue liner, and I was experimenting with this over the weekend, and I'll be darned, it works. Yes, it works. Um, now, I didn't feel like the individual lashes, I'll show you those in a minute, I didn't feel like those really stuck on it the way they would need to. The little ball, the little root of those lashes needs to go into some liquefied glue and then be placed on your lash line to really lay down. But for strip lashes, they held on really well with this stuff. And then I got just their standard glue. And by the way, this is 100% vegan, fast drying, gentle, latex-free, long-lasting, formaldehyde-free as well. And I am one who can get irritated at the lash line. I've worn both of these and have had no no irritation. This held my lashes on yesterday better than my Esquito lash glue, okay? In format, it looks just like what you can get from, you know, Kiss or Ardell. Uh, I was really surprised to find this, but I used this with strip lashes and actually a half lash and it held them on all day. And this liner, think about it, we're eliminating another step here. We're not having to line the lash line. This is the liner and the glue. So before I get rolling with that, I'll show you the lashes I came up with. They had some really like dramatic looking styles of full strip lashes, but I went for these. These are the natural light wispy. They say 100% handmade 3D faux mink lashes. So I thought these would be a good like kind of just standard look at how the lashes can be. And then I picked up two packs of the individual lashes um, and they're less like the little, I guess, balls, but they're more like lash clusters. We probably all had some individual lashes where 
they just have the little knot at the end and these have you know like a short a very short cluster strip and so these are the natural wispy short and then I got the wispy volume long as well so I may end up working with these and trying some combination of both on my eyes but like I said I think those will apply better with this kind of glue I just wasn't confident in the hold with this black lash glue liner but this is crazy guys I wonder how long this is actually going to last me but first off before we get there I'm going to I think these will be ideal on my eyes if I trim them a little bit so I'm going to do that and then we're going to jump into this application I got the lashes trimmed and when I was kind of playing around with these I set them on my eyes the other day technically like I could make them work but they do just go very far in if I don't trim them and here I think they're going to be perfect the lash band seems to be really good it's not too flimsy it's thick enough to kind of hold some shape with ease and I also felt like left to right both lashes seemed very symmetrical like as I was cutting off little segments it seemed like they were cut the exact same way and sometimes with cheap lashes like one lash won't look exactly like the other side these seem like really good quality um, so I'm gonna take my liner pen what's interesting here is I already have put mascara on if I did this first and then put on my mascara I think this would be too dry because this does not feel like goopy glue it feels tacky immediately so I think you're wanting to put the lashes on right away after you get this line on so I'm starting here in my inner corner I'm taking a few passes because it doesn't feel exactly like plain old liquid liner you can tell <laughs> like there's just a little thickness going across the lash line but look I'm fully lined right now um, I'm just going to clean it up a bit, but it's not really the kind of thing that lends itself to going over and over. And then I'm going to take my strip. I'm going to line it up with the center of my eye. Like I said, I feel like the glue is tacky immediately, so I wouldn't really waste any time putting the lash on. And then boom, she's on for a really natural thickened up lash. It's completely secure on there that's awesome let's do it on the other eye it doesn't really like to be gone over and over so I would say try to make it as one swipe as you can getting a little closer into my lash line but work fairly quickly don't like do a little bit of this and then stop for a sip of coffee and then go back to it just try to do it all in one fell swoop to the touch you can tell it's tacky right now center up your fingers with the lashes and then center up the lash with the middle of your eye easy to place on lightweight place them right down on that liner gang now this side has had a chance to sit and I can tug at the lash a little bit it's on there it's really on there so excited. I'm going to add a little more mascara on top because that's what I would always do after I put my lashes on. And yes, these are a very natural lash, but you can tell how thickened up things look once I got those on. And the cut of them too is really nice. They're not super blunt cut. They are kind of wispy. Adding a little mascara will give them some thickness and just bond everything. I'm so pleased. When I was messing with that glue the other day, I was shocked that it actually had hold and this just every bit as good as my Mosquito, actually a better experience hold wise and longevity wise on the eyes than I've been having with that stuff. And this is a buck 25, like I need to go back. I need to get more. I want backups upon backups of that stuff. Now, I didn't get a very clean line right here in the inner part with that glue so I'm just taking another pen that I can just get a tiny little line with. The advantages here of that liner pen being able to pop the lashes on immediately and also no drying time like instant darkness instant depth there not having to go over anything. Lastly I have a couple of lip products they're just kind of fun things they were also in that new LA Colors display so I got a roll-on gloss. I feel like roll-on glosses are coming back. I'm seeing them just popping out here and there from random different lines um, but I got watermelon and guys the scent on this now first off if you're new to roll on glosses and it's brand new and it looks like all the products down here before you start rolling it make sure the product goes down to where it's getting in touch with the ball otherwise nothing's rolling off the ball you know 
Oh man, watermelon lip smacker. Mm. It's totally clear, okay, so know that. Totally clear gloss. Texture-wise, mm, a little bit on the greasy side. It's a little bit thin, which most glosses this like this will be, except do you guys remember NYC in Walmart? They had the best roller lip glosses because there was just a little thickness in theirs. Um, it's like they were walking that line to where you could only be so thick for it to roll off of that ball. This is a little bit thin, but it feels moisturizing. It feels like a good thing to pop on at the start of your makeup, and it could just be like softening up your lips, you know? And the scent is fantastic, so that's fun. Buck 25. I got this LA Colors Jelly Balm Lip Balm, and I got the shade Cherry in hopes that this would leave some color on my lips, and guess what? It does. Let me show you. Also, it does smell like cherry, like strong cherry Kool-Aid vibes. And look, she's tinted. Look at this casual red lip. Feels awesome, smooth, hydrating. I mean, keep it in a purse. It's that naturally pigmented lip look that we love, right? Who would have thought? I mean, I was really kind of expecting maybe this will be just clear. Maybe it'll just be like a lip smacker. No, actual color is involved in that. Do you see what I mean, guys? We really ran into some good stuff. I'm going to end things off taking a little bit of my translucent powder right in this zone to kind of smooth things out a bit. Smooth and set. I'm shocked by the Ioni stuff. Like, that's my biggest wow. That's going to change my game. That's gonna be part of my lash routine. Both of those glues, the different lashes they're offering, I'm going back for more absolutely. That's one of the biggest takeaways if you're into false lashes, or if you've ever wanted to try them, my goodness, for $1.25 being able to stock up on some glues and some different lash styles you can try, you're just spending so much less there. I think that's just a big revelation. The new LA Color stuff, honestly, all of it was good. I think some people are gonna be flipping out for these blushes because they really do have excellent color payoff. Questionable how much is in the tube, but what is in there is highly pigmented. The lip products I think are really fun. I enjoyed the eyeshadows. Might look into what other shades there were of those. And if you're into Dollar Tree makeup. I did do a video within the last few weeks. I'll post the link to that in the description below. Those were some good finds, but today I'm kind of like in jaw-dropping mode. This is a really good experience we just had. Thank you all so much for your time. You see the sun's coming out a little sooner here. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.